Hello YouTubers, this is a new session where my friend, my brother Etienne and I here today, you know, are going to continue to talk about uh, standardizing game development. Uh, in the last session, we had a really nice session last time where we talked about, you know, just a POC proof of concept. Can we kind of write some uh, uh, back end of front end services? Can we have a view service? Can we attach that to a component? It was all really, really good. Uh, good experience. And uh, Etienne, uh, how are you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing good. Okay, I think I think some folks um, have been kind of some folks some some folks have been intrigued. Some folks, you know, were kind of not sure. Uh, but certainly, you know, a lot of people kind of um, had some impression or so to do about it. I have to mention here. Let's go back to the to the video and let's review how how what the community thinks about this so yeah nice things you can try in the future try to build more sophisticated case like a ball moving with acceleration with physics will your logic be in the service or in in the mono behavior can physics calculations be uh testable in a standard compliant way uh how do you stream data between standard compliant code and unity physics engine if you need performance and calling uh, synchronous service calls creates a hot path. Uh, also, if the game is not physics heavy, you can use Unity with Vue uh, with Blazor. So now you have Unity with the browser, with the WebAssembly. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know you, you could have a yeah. Unity with Vue in, in Blazor. That's very interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so let me just start with this. You know, uh, uh, Martinez, Martinez is right. There could be a, you know, we could do, I thought about this a little bit. I thought if we do XO, that's great, you know, for a starter, uh, just to show people things, but we can do XO in a way that kind of engages physics, right? Like the, mm -hmm. like every time you do an X, it kind of digs it in like a block of stone or something and you can yeah, see like the particles and yeah, yeah. The particles you know f flying and all that but but the question here is is quite important like even when we're working with blazer from a ui perspective uh, i was having this conversation with i think paul or sam or someone from the community the other day and i said to them okay you have to understand there is the even your application itself let me kind of visualize um what I'm talking about here, Etienne, and then we'll mm -hmm. uh, we'll we'll get started about the architecture of our program. This this is this is a great conversation because we basically can go and at any point in time and say, do we actually understand? So any application, no matter what it is that you're building, you know there is there is the hardware that's sitting underneath, you know that's being you know interacted with, and then there is the intermediary. Um, uh, software, right? So this is intermediary the operating system and the OS, the firmware, all, and, all the stuff. Yeah. And then there is your system, you know, your system, mm -hmm. right? And that system itself, right, is also three pieces. Like if you look into inside that guy, inside that system itself, you will notice that you have your. I'll show you. There is the here it is, here it is, right? This is this is literally what the standard's all about, like what is the try nature of everything and how it kind of transcends into every system. And if you look at every system out there, it's it's quite crazy how, how this kind of rolls up. So here, so even inside your system itself, you have your code and then there, you, there's some framework you're using with that code, mm -hmm. right? And then there is the, the translator, the thing that takes your assembly, assembly like this, the thing that takes your code and translate it into something, the operating system will pick up and basically, you know, uh, have it work with the hardware, right? So, yeah. so why is this important? Because we're sometimes these two things, people kind of forget that these two things are uh, two separate things. Like you have this guy here and you have this guy here like this but sometimes we forget that the framework why did i say frame framework the framework and the code 
are supposed to be separated from each other. The smarts here is to be able to go and say, here's my code, and I'm going to build it in a way that it, when it depends on that framework, I can know the borders and the boundaries between mm. what my code is doing versus what the framework is doing, and then how can I handle all the exceptions around that? It's it's very, it's very, very interesting. Like even like when, <laughs> let me tell you this, like even when we say your code in here, your code itself is actually three other things, yeah. right? Because your code, when you say when you're saying this is my code, right? Your code is dependent on some external library. You're calling in some external library into the system, right? And then there is your custom uh, routine that you're working with, right? And then there's this hybrid. When you go and say, oh, here's my code, but I'm using a native library or a native uh, functionality. Like when you say GUID.newGUID, that's not your code, but it lives within your code. So there's this hybrid that happens in between. And the separation between these two concerns is super important because that's how people would be able to kind of translate things. I'll tell you uh, real quick about uh, some, some gentleman that reached out to me last week and he said, I'm seeing what you're doing with OData Neo. And the code is so simple, I can implement it in Java because it's independent of a, a, a external library, framework specific, anything like that. So anyway, mm -hmm. so that's that's the idea. Now, this is just a big segue of me basically going and saying, we want to know the difference between, you know, our standard compliant code and then underneath that you have Unity. Unity sitting here, mm -hmm. Unity framework, right? And we want to build it in a way where it's actually a bunch of things. Like you're relying on Unity framework, and Unity framework is relying on uh, the .NET, .NET uh, libraries, right? And then Unity framework probably has other dependencies and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So what we what we want to do is that even that mono behavior, like back to, to uh, Martinez's uh, question, uh, I hope I'm saying his name right, Martinez, something like that. I, the What we're trying to do is that we want to go and say, yeah, I might depend on a mono uh, component behavior the same way I, I rely on component base in blazer like in, in blazer, blazer yeah. you go and say component base and then you have all this crazy capabilities outside of the box right that's great that's the mm -hmm. framework part now the question here is as long as this thing this framework that we're relying on is generic and i'm not modifying it or uh, uh, not ab like if as long as i'm abstracting it in a way that makes my code testable then we're good we should be fine right testing the back end part should be okay this is where i think mm -hmm. the intelligence should live but there is something called yeah. ui logic like when you like when you click a button and the button goes gray right that's ui logic that that's mm -hmm. not something that lives in the back end not even in the view no, no. itself right yeah. so, so there is these different behaviors right that happens between these two different things anyway so this system that we're trying to implement together, right? Uh, a, a simple game, right? We can we can take it into some crazy uh, dimensions. It's gonna have some physics in it for sure. I just yeah. want to do a, an XO game, and the reason for that is it's not about the XO game itself. It's about you know just showing people here is a live. I want to see what's it gonna take to bring standardized system into a simple game of exos right mm -hmm. maybe when the game is over the blocks will just kind of fall apart and it says the game something right something innovative and creative right yeah <laughs> good good yeah and and i also also gave it a lot of thought i think i think definitely with the game we need to check um what what are all the kinds of like i was playing around with the leaderboard idea mm. um and how we, because that will do a lot with data. And that's where we're going to do our HTTP calls mm -hmm. uh, or one of the places where we'll do that. Mm -hmm. So as long as our game kind of reflects a lot of different uh, scenarios that you would like 
because I mean, we we experimenting here. You know, this this might not even work at the end of the day, or it might not be able to fully be standard compliant. But um, I we'll definitely see. think like we'll try the it. more the more projects we do, the more yep. experiments we do, the yep, we'll learn be... a lot from it. Yeah. Yep, that's that's the idea. You know, let's see if there's a system out there that can't fall within the standard. I'd like to see why, because that's my yeah, learning now, definitely. right? That's my part yeah. of learning now. Okay, so so here's the thing. I know I know that there is a couple of concepts here, like from a conceptual standpoint, right? I know we need something like an XO game. I like I'm gonna I'm gonna go full abstraction with data. So I'm gonna go and say, hey Etienne, there is a there is a a uh, there is there is this model. There is this relational model that we call a game. So this is one match, one game, one match, right? And this match could have an ID, could have dates. It doesn't matter. You know, it's just a record in our database that says this is one match. Okay, so great. And this has dates. You know, it has everything in it. Okay. And then this match has a many to one relationship with, let's call it match move. What should we call it? Move? Like when you do X or O, what do you call that? That's just like a, like a move, right? Yeah, like a, an action or a yeah, move. I think move, move right? So a move would have this match ID as a foreign key. So every match has a bunch of moves in it, right? So this is the move that points to this guy, right? And these moves, they have a, 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 the action itself. I don't know. You know, if you have like a, a three by three, three by three, so that's nine, you can kind of go and say, mm -hmm. oh, they moved it into point zero, zero two, for instance. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then we can go and say type, the type of that move, it's either X or O, right? There's nothing else, right? And then, so that's the location. Let's call this the location. Location yeah. is this, an X, Y location. And then there's a type that's either X or O. And then we need to know the player. Player yeah, the ID. Player made it. Yeah. yeah. So that's the player, right? And then we also want to know the date, right? Why? Because we can tell from the dates, you know, the order of things. Like, when did you make that move? Because mm -hmm. later on, when we do that leaderboard thing, we can actually go and say, who's the fastest thinker, the fastest player in terms mm -hmm. of the time they that's take, true. right? You can literally yeah. go and say... And maybe, maybe you get like an achievement or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Th th this guy's fast. This guy's really fast. Yeah. And then later on, we go a little bit crazy, and we take this this data and we feed it into a a, a learning model for a machine learning, and then wow, see the man. intelligence of all of these players. We combine it into one module. <laughs> we'll we'll yeah. come to the crazy, right? And then we go and see yeah. who can beat the UI. The thing, the, the, yeah. the thing about the UI is that so the AI is that um, it doesn't get emotional when it gets defeated. It learns. Mm -hmm. It goes and say, it becomes okay. Better. It becomes better. Yeah, yeah it becomes better. Yeah. Right? Unlike people, people will be like, oh, I got defeated. And then they make a movie yeah. about it. Right? Nope. <laughs> nope. They go <laughs> the book, yeah. and they cry. <laughs> you know what I mean? Nope. In this case here, this this here that, that's the power of the ai the ai will go and say okay i did not know you could do that pattern now teach me so the next time i'm playing and i think we could learn a, a thing or two from the ai that's, about that. yeah you know, that's it, definitely the ai might teach us a new way of playing it you know? <laughs> exactly Is, that's because that's what happened with that what's that go game with uh that that what's it, the, the chess mind. the chess game yeah yes. yeah yeah, I, I heard about that. I think someone was like having some people said he was having like a an, an earpiece. So he's listening or something in their feet that tells them, you know, which move they need to take. 
it doesn't matter. The point here, here, yeah. this is super fun for one. Like this is really, really. I haven't designed a game in a very, very long time. Maybe since two thousand three or something. I was having like a platformer game, and I lost the code. I wish I had this code somewhere. But but here's the deal, you know. Uh, the so you have a player ID. Okay, maybe we need a player then. When that's okay, you know, we can go here and say, well, you know, these are your requirement, your prerequisites. These these things is what I call edge entities. They are called, yeah. but nobody calls them. Like they are edge entities. So that's a player, and a player can be something as simple. Like we're not gonna go crazy with, you know, it's just gonna be something as, you know, just give me your name, you know, and here's your username, right? And here's your identifier, and that's it. Later on, we can go and say, based on this player, I can tell you all the games that this player has played based on the move because you could mm -hmm. we could have our game so cool that it can substitute players mid mid air you know like you can literally yeah. go and say it's two against two right or three against three or whatever the case may be we can even play a crazier game with like xos but multi-dimensional like 3d dimension yeah, like a 3d block yeah that exactly oh, that's awesome. see how crazy you can go with this yeah. you know so it's entertaining that's but fun. also at the same time it's standard compliance so the magic is in the on both sides and that's that's why i try to extract better than all of this i have a new friend you know you and i get to chat like that and yeah, talk to each other yeah. and have fun and all that and learn a lot through the process yeah. yeah no i love it i love it i even i even thought like because games always there's always one thing that that makes a game unique or or there's always a game mechanic behind a game right yeah, and I thought like we can even because like you said now you can have uh, two against two like dual matches you can have three against three. There's so many type of games that we can make. We can even make like a which which I think will also be a lot of fun is if you give a time limit like mm -hmm. you have sixty mm -hmm. second matches, and depending on how many, but you also limit the speed on how you can draw. You know? Yeah, because you, you you're engraving it into a rock, so it yeah. shouldn't be like. Whoosh, it should be like <laughs> the time is also running out. Yeah, like so like you... it's it's really doing it in the rock. Yeah, yeah I'm I'm with you. So it gives that that adrenaline rush. Yeah, and and the, the guy that wins the most matches in sixty seconds. Wins yeah, you know, stuff like that. We we can gather a lot of yeah, telemetry out of that. The, the, the gamification concept is amazing. But anyway, here's the thing. That's our MVP, basically minimum viable product. Just something that has where I can throw a player name and something where I can throw start a match. Later on, we can expand and say, okay, what type of match? How many players? You know, is it, uh, is it human versus uh, human or human versus AI or whatever the case may be? So here's what I'm thinking. Okay, so this is the back end model. This this one is super simple. Like you know, doing something like that is super easy. We would need uh, simply just an orchestration service that starts a match, and then uh, or 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 really a simple API that starts a match, and then another API that sends in a move with the match ID and uh, and uh, and the player and all the little other details. It's mostly post post post. And then you kind of reflect that on the game from the other side. Okay, so that's cool. Um, the the cooler thing about this is that we can build that as a separate API that you can hook up a game on top of it, right? Mm -hmm. So that's that part. So I would go and do something like this. Easy. I would go and say, okay, here's my here's a bunch of brokers, storage brokers, and these brokers have a bunch of services sitting in front of them. And each one of these services is literally just confirming into a database. And the database is basically that's where they're interacting with the system. So that's your uh, match, match storage broker. Uh, you know, you have a, a, a player storage yeah. broker. Actually, I'm going to do it in that order because I'm, you know, I'm crazy. Player storage worker, like the order here is important, right? Because you can't yeah. start, you can't start a, you can't start a game without a player. You can't start a match. So match storage broker. <laughs> and then there's the uh, move storage broker, right? And then we have the same thing with, uh, let's go here. Let's go here. 
and then let's go here just like that and then in here we're basically going to go and say this is a player service this is a match service you're doing your validations you're making sure that everything is is running and then at the very end you go here and say move service and then in front of each and every one of these you have a controller just an api endpoint and this api endpoint will basically go and say here so this is players controller and this is matches controller mm -hmm. and this is moves controller okay that basically makes the entire api you want to post and you want to get mm -hmm. Done and done, right? You slap yeah. O data on top of that, you can get all the moves per game name without having to do anything right. else, yeah. right? That's the beauty of it. Okay, but that's that here, <laughs> that's sitting right here. That's basically my friend is um, the back end, right? So that's yeah. the back end API for all of this. You have a you know bunch of services and a bunch of purposes and a bunch of exposure layers now. Here's how I'm imagining, quote unquote, the front end, because that would be the actual game, right? Mm -hmm. The front end of this would look something like this. I would need these brokers as API brokers. See how beautiful this is? Like you can go and say that the design matches on both the sides. Same. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's a lot simpler. So you have these guys. So these guys are just literally calling cross systems like that. Right. And then you have something very similar to this in here on the on the game end. So you have this guy sitting up in here. So this is all going like that. And then on top of these, we have what we call a view services. And these view services is basically the the end of the back and the beginning of the front in terms of uh, kind of translating the data that's coming back from the back end into mm -hmm. front end stuff. And now here comes the fun part. Now you, we need to talk about the component, right? And I'm assuming like most of these, all of these will need to have like one orchestration service called game, orchest game view orchestration service. And this game view orchestration service, it basically kind of manages and orchestrates all the work that these services need to do. And then in front of that, this is where the magic happens. We need these components, components that will basically interact directly with this orchestration service. Now, the question here is like for these components, you know, now let's talk about what kind of components we need, right? So now we lift this realm. Let me take this here. Let me put that guy in the back here. Okay, here we go. So now, Here's what I'm thinking. Actually, I'll come back to this one later. In terms of component architecture, right? Forget about this guy for a second. In mm -hmm. terms of component architecture, we need a block component. That's the block that you draw in the X's and O's and all that, right? So that's that block. And then we need a... We need a, a, uh, a match component so that's the container has that component and maybe we need another component that is like player component so that will show us the players right whose player is it yeah right and then maybe we need a turn component so whose turn is it like the little thing that pops up and kind of lights up the screen right so <laughs> so so from a design perspective uh we we are going to rely on the like the game let's visualize the game first so this is your game and then you have this where's that xo that i just did in a second ago hold on there it is it was on the page one. Oh yeah okay never mind. yeah for me there's no page one you'll see a lot this is i do all day <laughs> like i love i love this yep even my day yeah. job man like i i realized that for software engineers language is great but what's really better than language is to give people visualization and let them translate in their heads whatever yeah. i'm trying to say right so okay yeah. so, so this is the game and then we need to have this is the player component so we have player one just something dumb and simple like i'm not even mm -hmm. trying right you can make like, it later yeah yep yeah, this is player one and this is player two 
right? And this guy lights up like it, like it goes red and green based on, you know, whose turn is it, right? So if it's this guy's turn, it will be like it's your turn. And then maybe, you know, so, okay, so that's the container, the players, the blocks, right? And the block has status in it. It flips X or O. And is there is 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 this game called Tic Tac Toe? Is that the name of it? Tic Tac Toe. Yeah. Oh, I, I I I didn't even I just I just say X O. But anyway, so this is this, and then maybe later on we'll have like something like a time component or something, right? And this time component. So what did we say? Turn player uh, block match. There you go. So this <laughs> so this guy here, this guy right here, that's your match component. Right, so that's here is the match component. And then these guys up here, these two guys here, right, so, come on, come on, I'm stuck. Like this is, this is a, okay, so let's do this. So here it was supposed to move but it doesn't want to move so you're gonna to have to make it so there's one and then here's the second one so both of these basically are what we're gonna call the uh the player component right and then you have this guy here which is gonna be the turn component So this little guy in here is going to be this here is the turn component. And then of course, you know, the most important one of them all is the uh, the block component. So it's this a guy. All of these actually, like all of them are like block components. Block component. I do this, Etienne, because I want to kind of. This is how I stay with people on the same page. Like this is how I tell people, okay, here's my, here's, a, here's inside of my head. That's what it looks like, and you know, people then come and say, wait a second. So, so this looks like it. Here's your match. Your match is like the container of all of this nonsense, and then inside that match, you have players, and then these players they have components, and then these components they can basically go and say, okay, this is our. Uh, this is really our, uh, why did I choose that color? That's dumb. Hold on. Here, maybe something distinct so people kind of know this is not related or not meaningful in any way other than just a pointer. Okay, so there's that. And maybe we need to extend that guy a little bit so we know it's actually talking about this particular. So the turn is like a, like two components laying on top of each other, basically. Okay, the component architecture then, like what is, what is like, ideally we would have like a, we would have the match component have dependency on both the block and a player component. Actually, this would be player turn component, which is like, an or it's it's like an orchestration. It's literally the equivalent of an orchestration. Yeah, because you have the player yeah. and the turn indicator. Yep. yep. So this is literally how I'm structuring it. So this is player component. So this guy only knows how to render a player. And this guy only knows how to, you know, this is a turn component. So this is a player turn component. See how this works? It's simple. Like anybody can understand. Be like, okay, I get it now. I get what you're trying to do. And even this block component. So the block itself is its own thing, like a container, right? But the block, let me, I need space. Space is, is, is if you see like, uh, you know, in my workplace, I have like the biggest surface hub. It's like a massive smart board and it's full of nonsense on the board because it's, I'm throwing all that stuff at it. <laughs> so anyway, so this, this here, we want, we want two things. We want a block plus status, like 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 a plus move component. And this move is gonna render X or O. Later on, that component is gonna be crazy. It's gonna actually do the actual UI, right? So, but now it's just yeah. a simple thing. So this is block, uh, uh, um, move block component. 
And then on top of all of this, there's this guy. So this guy's saying, oh, I'm supposed to just see the players and whose turn is it and manage state, you know, to kind of say, oh, send to this particular, you know, which move is it? Is it going to be an X or an O? Just like that. So now, <laughs> so let's, let me take this guy upstairs a little bit. Let's go here. Let's throw it up here. By the way, th this literally this little 20 minutes or 15 minutes that we just talked, start talking about this. You wouldn't believe how many months and months people take. Well, it depends on yeah. the complexity, right? So imagine this. So this guy is sitting like this. Right. And that's your match component. Now, the cool thing about all of this is that I can flip this upside down. Um, let's see. Where is the flipping upside down part uh, property? There is a thing that makes it kind of go. Is it this one? Oh, it just ruined it. Let's see. Vertical. Horizontal. So, <laughs> okay. What I'm trying to say here is that, fine, fine, we'll do it this way. That's dumb. Because the UI always is intersectional with with the data stream, right? So what this would look like, we'll sit this guy like this, and we'll take these guys down here. And then we'll sit this guy like this, and we'll take... Set them a little bit closer so we have space. Right, so you have the move block, something that contains plus something that renders. And then in here, this is a player turn. This is something that shows the turn and something that renders a player. It's gonna have a picture and we can we can see how you when you separate them early on like that. You can go and say, okay, now I want to show the player picture or maybe play a video mm. of the player when he's winning, you know? It, yeah. You can do a lot of things. Well, each, like, even each player can have an avatar or something. Yes, you know, like, like an avatar. Yeah. What's your preference? What do you want to do? We'll, you know, we'll do it together. Okay, so there's this guy. So watch this. This is how I, you know, kind of link them all together. And this is how it's all coming in into fruition together. So this comes a little bit closer. And then we need to centralize this baby here. I'm, I'm a, you know, this is just a, my OCD, you know, just, yeah. just obs obsessive, compulsive. No worries, I'm also yes, I'm a, it has to be perfect, and if it's not perfect, I'm not happy. So watch this, the intersection in here. Watch this, and now you have your UI intersecting with the data and then on top of all of this there's what we call a page i guess in your case it's a scene so this is the component and this is the game scene which is just a big container of that match just the environment yeah. yeah basically the environment and ui we just say a page watch this this becomes your exposure watch watch this becomes your exposure all of these pieces here become your um all of these here become your uh, uh logic and then underneath all of this is your the basically the non customized components that you don't own that you're using outside of the box to be able to render all of this so these are all what we call base components so these are the red ones in here so so these aren't unity's components these are on top the of that still yeah, the green is you. The red is Unity, basically. Okay. That's the entire gaming system, right? You have an API, and now, uh, yeah, I've I've been meaning to do this. So this is this is your uh, back end or front end. This is your exposure layer, like this. And you slap this guy in the back, and now you got yourself a a standard compliant gaming system. Like this. So, <laughs> so here's what we can do. Because this is mainly focusing on the gaming experience out of this, we can stub these guys. Like we can literally stub this and say, hey, give me some data. It doesn't matter. What I really want to do 
at least in our in our next session because we're almost an hour in um the what i want to do in is to be able to at least start with these basic components right these basic you know, this will be a player base component and this would be a turn base component and we want a block see the, the crazy thing about this architecture is that you can literally take it as is and go implement it on a web page desktop application mobile application a, a mobile app whatever it, whatever it may be it will follow the same ideas the same concepts and the same ideas mm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah you, yeah i mean you will need to rewrite that middle part basically what should we uh, call what what should we call this game let's go here and let's go yeah. here i thought of i thought of uh because you mentioned the rock like yeah. living on a rock yeah um what should we call it tick tack rock <laughs> it doesn't matter what do you want to or call? you can like rock steady go or something you no know, like ready steady rock. go rock steady go rock steady go like this okay i'm fine with that right and it's public and we have get ignore for visual studio i don't know how the thing you works can, yeah i think i think using the one for unity might be better i think this one is one for unity yeah Ooh, i did not know yeah, that that adds add some stuffies nice nice i like that a lot okay so that's that would be your you know that would be like the actual game and we would have something called rock steady go that is um that is core so so there's the core which is the api side actually i should call it this way rock steady go dot game that's the rename and then yeah. The other one would be the core API. So core.api or api.core, whatever the case may be. And then here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go here into this readme. I usually do something really dumb, but it works every time, which is to basically go and say, uh, where is where is the diagram? I'm, I'm just trying to find the diagram that you and I just draw. Yeah, so... <sighs> Let me let me go back here. We're gonna have to go really slow on this because you yeah. know in, in order for do everything like right. So so I'm gonna go here and say uh, rock steady so architecture. That's the name. So now this is saved, and now I want to be able to go and say I want to upload this file in here so let's see so this here is like this add file create new file great and then i'm going to go and say designs flash nice i like that and then uh, uh well there will be architecture and there will be just design for the game itself so that's great so here you go architecture and then because it's Linux, you know, in Linux, the, there aren't really directories. It's just part of the name of the whole thing is the is the directory itself. But anyway, this is this will be. Can I actually upload a file? Let's see. Uh, you know, uh, uh, rock. Oh, dot draw. OK, so now I can create this. Great. Now, can I upload a file? Yes, I can. Oh, yes, I can. Yeah. So now if I go back to desktop and Rocksteady Go Architecture, so that's the draw IO. It, it would be nice to have like a native support for draw IO files in, in the thing. Like if I can, like right now it's oh, yeah. showing me the thing like this, right? But it would be nice if I can just go and say, hey, show me show me the actual thing yeah see it's dumb if if we have a viewer for this that would be great anyway uh what is this on the side go to file okay so okay so i have the file what i can do as well 
is that I can go onto that file itself and export it as a as a PNG. Here's how we're gonna make this work. We're gonna export it as a PNG. And I'm gonna save it in here. And then I'm gonna go into the architecture and then I'm gonna upload a file again. Choose from files. Here is the whole thing. Great. And then let's see. So now I can go here and say, give me the raw, the actual raw uh, value of this. Look at that. That's crazy. It's too big. Like it's it's too large that you have to kind of scroll around. But then let's see if I can copy open image in new tab. Is that? Yeah, that's the raw one. Perfect. Perfection. So now we can go back into this just, just for funsies. We can go here is high level architecture. That's actually low level architecture. Low high. <laughs> As I put like the high level components, but also the innards of these components. And then I think you can just do, uh, let's see, I think it's something image. Hold on. Make this work. It's always a crazy way to do things. So there's this cool thing that you can just do this and it generates like a thing for you. You know what I mean? But uh, sometimes like it works. preview. Works. Yeah, like a preview. Let's see. Do I just do it in here? Let's see. If you uh, click that preview button, or this tab. So, so what if I did this? Hold on. Let's, let's go here. Add read me. Oh, that's not the one. There it is. Nope, not this one. Uh, hold on. It's supposed to be something like this. Yeah, that won't render it because you need to go and say bang. Okay, let me. I was just doing this like a second ago for uh, the um, uh, the Levent library. So let's go to Levent here. I do this. It gets generated too, so you don't have to. Oh, that's cool. There you go. So this. Ah, so that's what it is. Just a bang image. And then you put your thing. Okay, perfect. And then if I go on preview here, yep, there you go. That's, that's fantastic. Cool. Okay. That's so the whole that's, thing. Yeah. yeah, that's the whole thing. Like this is us basically saying, hey guys, here's the here's the entire architecture. If you want to take a look at it. You know, that's how things work. And just like that, we initialized the high level view of this game, right? Now, let's break these sessions of ours into segments. So I want us, you know, to think about like the next time we connect on this is I want us to just build a tiny uh, uh, block component because that's where everything starts, right? We just want a block. And this block will basically like the architecture shows here the the block is just like a like a rock and then the move component is the actual action of just making like this movement of x or o and stuff like that right we can build some of these components next time it's going to take a little bit of thinking though like how do you do that visualization itself that's going to be very interesting ah oh, we'll give yeah. it a shot we'll see what it looks like yeah. What do you think about that? No, I think I think that's a good idea. Let's take it like a component at a time. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of stuff you can do in Unity. I mean, that that's the fun part is we can if we can play around with what it looks like. You know, we yeah. can have a three D rock, like a three D, almost like a tablet. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that's how I imagine this cartoon style tablet, and there should be there should be. That's just the cool thing about 
the uh, unit view. Uh -huh. They have the asset store, which which has like a lot of free assets that we can use. I think so you can just so I'm we could just throw some stuff in there just to play around with. Um, I'm assuming like game developers and stuff like that, they basically go and say like um, the 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 hire people to create their own assets. So like yeah. these these existing assets, they just use them. You know, if you're just, just starting something, yeah. yeah. But if you yeah. wanna, you have to customize everything to make the game actually yes. fits what you're yeah. trying to do. That's very interesting. That's very yeah. interesting. That's 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 where it also um, gets fun. If you if you're an indie game developer. You need to learn those skills as well. Yeah, and that's that's where that's where you have to like really commit a lot of time. Yeah, when, when you want to do game development and you want to do your own games, you have to be able to do the the, the assets, everything, everything, the programming, yeah. the sound, the, the yeah. You, you, it's you, very you're, awesome. you're like you're like an army one one army one one man army, right? Like the whole <laughs> the whole crew. Yeah, I think you should at least know something about it, like. You know, usually what I tell engineers is that, you know, you don't have to be a super in-depth web web designer or something. Know how to do it. Like, know a high level about how to do it. Because once you start figuring out how to do that, if you want to dig a little bit deeper, you can go to SMEs. You can go to subject matter experts and say to them, hey, help me out with this. But you can at least yeah. put a prototype out there. Yeah. You know, you just can communicate just what you want to do. Yeah. 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 At least, at least put a prototype out there and tell people, okay, with the minimum budget I have, sometimes you have to wear different hats. And if you have to wear different hats, you have to be able to stand up, you know, your own thing, you know, and then later on people will come and say, oh, your UI looks like crap. You know, we're going to have to fix it and be like, yeah, I know that's, I'm, I just, my object, my objective of putting this <laughs> together is for you to come in and be like, yeah, I want to fix it with you. I want to make it. I want to make it a little bit better. Anyway, so 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 that's good as a as a starting discussion for for the beginning. We can mock the API. We can use wire mock to kind of pretend that there's an API sitting where I might just find a couple of hours and just roll it all up for you. We might we might just go and talk to uh, Christo Dutui uh, and basically tell him uh, tell him to use this standardly library that he has that generates APIs for us because this is a this is a That'll very straight, cool. yeah, yeah. This is a very straightforward API. There's no magic it's, there, right? It's gonna take him five minutes. <laughs> it literally, yeah. take him five minutes. He, like he built the system that just writes up the entire thing for you in five minutes. I don't know how he did it, but he did it, and he had it templatized. He he put some mm -hmm. he put some energy into it. I'm really happy that that uh, he put something like that out there. Uh, I still tell people like if you've done it fifty thousand times, great. Go ahead and use an automated tool. But oh, okay. if you haven't, you have to get used to it because once you start needing a little bit of um, uh, customization for your business rules, what you need to validate, what kind of message that you want to return to the user, localization, all of that stuff, it, things are going to get a little bit different, and you're going to have to go back and modify modify your code. Anyway, so 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 next time you and I hang out, you know, let's let's build the block. Remind okay. me, please, you know, because I might just forget. <laughs> let's see if we can design like ideally, uh, Etienne, is that what I want to say is that I want to be able to go and say this. No, not this guy. This here. You said a tablet, right? OK, so. We need to be able to go and say, I want, no, really, that that's the same thing that we just draw. Yeah, this guy here. These are blocks. And then the things inside these things, these are what I call a move. Right? You're going to have to give things yeah. names, you know, from day yeah. one. So. Yeah. so so, these blocks, what do they look like? They need to render and they need to look pretty. Right? All that can sit in the base component itself, you know? Yeah. And, and, and. Yeah, I mean that you should be able to change and modify. I think this is this is actually the nice thing and something I want to be able to do. Um, mm -hmm. Like if, if you have the little team, you know, as as a little game development company or whatnot, you have a little team. You have a designer that does knows nothing about code, but you can put them in Unity and they can still go and and change the assets, change what it looks like. Um, you give them little view components stuff that has all the logic and it 
and it has to automatically connect. If you push, if you pull it into an old, old we can maybe chat about that uh, when we create the project and whatnot. Yep. But you should literally be able to take that view component because in Unity you can create what they call prefabs, prefabricated yep. assets. Yep. So your view components will literally be drag and drop. I, I want this button. I want this, and then. Okay. You know, be able to, you, you should be able to give it to a designer and they can go and change everything without having to change your code. That having that's what we need code, to achieve. That's right. Yeah. Oh, that like would little be... Lego blocks, but that has yep. actual logic behind it. That's yep. what we need to achieve. That's what I want to achieve. Yeah. Yep. We'll do that. We'll just do that. And then the leaderboard part will be super easy because now that you have players, and you can link these players to time and games and all that. You can go and see who played the most games. What was the outcome, you know, of these games? Oh, we can do it. Like the data part, the, 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 the smarts behind the UI. You know, that's easy. I've done this way too many times. The interesting thing <laughs> is where you come in and say, no, here's all these prefabs and yeah. stuff like that. I don't know, man. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd like to see what that would look like. Uh, yeah. The other thing is... I think, you know, just, just for the people watching us, you know, this is, you know, we're trying to design a game, not just a game that works, but it works right and it works beautifully, right? And that last part is super important because it's it's often kind of discarded or over overseen because the people just like say, well, it, if it works, don't fix it, right? But if it's not pretty, it's if it doesn't look good, you know, what's the point of it? You know, I saw this, I posted this on Facebook yesterday. I, I saw this on the internet and I, I was like, okay, I'm gonna post this. This is great. Check this out. Actually, I think I think it was uh, it was in our uh, community. So I think Mabruk posted this. It was hilarious. Uh, let me go to our community here. Someone posted this yesterday and was laughing so hard about it. Oh, there it is. See. Oh, so, yeah. So, so technically, good. technically, this thing works, right? But it looks like garbage. Nobody's gonna nobody's <laughs> gonna buy that. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, technically the water is running and the water is going through the tube end to end, right? Yeah. That's what you call a MVP. MVP, <laughs> MVP right? A viable product. <laughs> <laughs> you know? hey, unit tested, that's unit tested. End to just, end. Just <laughs> that's that's yeah. literally the visualization of us saying just to make get the test part. Yep. Yeah. That's what you get. <laughs> yeah. This is yeah. this is a great example of basically going and saying um <laughs> so this is a great example of going and saying wait a second the the it it, it works. It's functional but it's garbage. And it's a great example that I always, this is, I've always been talking about. This is why I wrote the standard is because I want people to understand that works is not enough. It needs to be beautiful. It needs to be enticing. It needs to be something that people would want to use. Even if it's just an API, even if it's just a simple library, you know, why do I put all this time and effort into documentation, making sure that you have interfaces that you can mock and all that because of this, right? Because you you might end up in a situation like this. It's not an overstatement to say that the majority of the applications that run the world today look like this. You know, it's just garbage. It's just pure garbage that needs to be cleaned up and needs to be standardized. Anyway, my dear friend, Etienne, it's always a pleasure talking to you, brother. I'm sorry we didn't do a lot of coding today, but, uh, you know, we uh, there's there is a whole lot of, like, I've been looking into these links that you've been sharing with me about, you know, libraries and tests and how we can test drive Unity. We need to standardize all of this. We need to go out there and say it does not matter, you know, because a lot of people turn with great ideas. They turn away because of how complex these systems are. That's what the stand where the standard comes in and say, no, here is exactly how the system can be designed. Yeah. Yeah. This is fantastic. Yeah. What else do you have? Any last yeah. remarks from your side? Yeah, no, I mean I you know, I've, I've since our last session I've I've really been thinking a lot on you know the, the direction we are going. And obviously, you know, not not everyone's gonna agree. I mean that's always the the way with every new kind of frontier you're trying yep. to yep. So yeah that, that's not the purpose of it this is not this is not to give you a golden hammer that can yep. 
fix every, but the standard in its nature should, should like it, it tells you it should work. Yep. And following the standard gives you like that ability. I can create something, even though I don't, maybe it's not the best way. Like in Unity, for instance, if you, you might have your own way of, of architecting yep. a game that works perfect in Unity and for your team. Yep. But, but for you, that's, that's, that's great. But if you yep. wanted to, in our case, we want to be able to just plug a Blazor website on it. Yep. And yep. your logic should still be there. Yeah. You know, that's what we want to achieve. So this is not like a, you know, a means to everything. Yeah. Still go out there, find different ways, do your own studying. Yep. Um, learn more about Unity in your own time, kind of. Yep. Absolutely. The, but, the uh, most the, the most important part about this is that, you know, once you start writing a project, you know, according to the standard, you will have over 300 engineers from all over the world coming in saying, hey, if you need help, you know, we already know how you're building it. You're playing by the yeah. book. That's that's the real power of it. You know, I, I always tell people this everywhere. I said, imagine having someone from day zero. You know, day zero, just join the team and day zero, they created like three, four pull requests. No onboarding yeah. needed. No onboarding needed. No, uh, no training needed. You know, this is a standardized system that people can go mm -hmm. and say, yes, I can contribute to this system. I have yeah. absolutely no problem understanding every single bit of this system, no matter how complex it is. How beautiful is that? That's a cool thing, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's awesome. I was I was studying at a buddy of mine today, Marcus. Mm -hmm. Um, because he told me he told me out of the blue, hey man, I saw your video on YouTube. On YouTube. And he and he watched the whole thing like at the end. The whole um, but he knows like he's still he, he's not a developer, you know. Yeah. He and and when I spoke to him, like I, I really had this he, he should be able to follow the videos, even yeah. though he, he hasn't doesn't have programming yep. experience. Yeah. If he learns the standard, yeah, and he and he knows how to program or yep. write C sharp and does his own studying about C sharp and all that. Um, I actually told him to watch your playlist with Sally. I think oh Sally, yeah, learning C sharp yeah. with Sally. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Like that's like a good entry point. Yeah. But if he's able to learn the standard, he should be able to, like you say, any project that that is standardized, he should be able to work on. That's that's yep. the whole. That's like a side effect of being yep. a developer that can code standard compliant software. Yep. You don't yep. need to learn because I've worked on so many projects and every project was a different way of architecting. Yep. Every developer has their own way of coding. I mean, and it takes <sighs> it takes weeks and weeks. You know, the, the most is, scary uh, thing for me is that when there you have a clash of patterns, like you know, someone starts a project, you know, they they move on to doing bigger and better things, and then someone else is in is in charge, and now they're doing it their own different way and now the project is just a mishmash of patterns that doesn't have any rhyme or reason to it mm -hmm. and people expect somehow like if you pull in you know a junior engineer someone even even a senior engineer sometimes i'd, I'd rock into some projects i'm like what the hell has happened here you know this looks like someone just throw up a bunch of code <laughs> you know on the, yeah. on the on the id Battle zone. <laughs> yeah like yeah. what the heck like what is going on here right and you know comments everywhere you know you have you know oh throw but don't like a catch block but there's no exception throwing oh let's just put a sticker mm -hmm. on that engine who needs to handle exceptions anymore that's so 1995 <laughs> why would why would why would we do that it, you know that's ab absolutely absolutely unacceptable anyway my dear friend it's always a pleasure to talk to you and i hope people kind of find a little bit of you know inspiration a little bit of guidance into this and as usual, for the people watching us, you know, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you know, or compliments for Mr. Etienne here, please drop a comment in the comment section. And as usual, don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you next week. Bye. So, yes. <laughs>